Review, the show where a couple of guys in a couple of countries have a couple of beers and discuss a stadium somewhere in the world, their experiences there. I'm Paul. And I'm Dave. And we are excited to be here with you tonight, this afternoon, this morning, whenever you happen to be watching. We're glad you're here. Before we get started, please subscribe to the Stadium Journey YouTube channel. That's where you'll find all of the obstructed views. What is this, like number 45? There are a bunch of them is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Uh, Like the video, leave a comment, leave two comments. Check out stadiumjourney.com for all of our fantastic content. So let's get rolling. Dave, what are you drinking today? So with my tradition, cheapness, I don't know what you want to call it. I tend not to buy a lot of beer. Because let's call it frugality. You have a, a gathering and suddenly a bunch of beer shows up at your house and it just stays there and it never leaves. This is the way I operate. So anyway. I like that. My, my friends must be alcoholics because that just doesn't happen. <laughs> They always bring more than they drink, so nice, I don't know. Nice. And 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 it's a nice way of showing thanks for hospitality. So I'm cool with that. Anyway, uh, one of my friends brought over some beers from Forefathers Brewing in Cambridge, or actually, if you live in this area, uh, you would not call it Cambridge; you would call it Hespler, which is a part of Cambridge. But you know, Hesplerites are pretty are pretty uh, solid about calling it Hespler as opposed to Cambridge. So anyway. Uh, limited edition, and and this is another another unique one. And I'm, I'm not sure you dig it, but this is the Sour Dogs of Peach Bay by Forefathers Brewing. This is kind of their generic label, and then they they label label it on the back. So it's a limited limited edition. Uh, one of the most sour sours I've ever had, but it's it's funny. It goes from sour to sweet, and boom. Just like that. So uh, the aftertaste is yeah. is is like uh, fuzzy peaches, you know, yeah. candy yeah. fuzzy peaches. Yeah, kind of like that. So you got the juxtaposition of the sour and the peach working together. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Working together. So <laughs> sour dogs of Peach Bay. What do you got? Funny. Uh, you have a peach beer today. I have a blueberry beer. So it's fall. Blueberries in season. Love, love myself some blueberry beers. So you, you told, you said I wouldn't like the the peach sour. You're right, by the way, but I do love me some blueberry beer. And this one is from Barnstable Brewing in Hyannis, Massachusetts, out on Cape Cod. Cape Cod is one of my favorite places in the world to go. And the can is a very Cape Cod like scene. It's a little, little cottage on the Cape with your, uh, your beach scene and so forth. And uh, I opened the can. I was like, yep, blueberries. You can smell very strong. So that's what I've got today. Uh, if you were visiting today's destination, and I hope I don't screw this one up because I love the name, we might be drinking a Goggle Fogger Hefeweizen from Fat Heads Brewing in Canton, Ohio, because today we're talking about the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. So before we dive in, let's take a look at the museum vitals. <laughs> All right, so uh, you're taking a trip to Ohio. You decide, you know what? I'm going to go uh, check out the Football Hall of Fame. It's located in Canton, which is about 45 minutes hour south of Cleveland, give or take. Maybe even not that much. But anyway, you pull up to the facility, and man, this thing, from the moment you drive in the parking lot, it screams football. Not only is the roof shaped like a big football, there's a football stadium attached to it, man. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so... Uh, We've, we've done uh, obstructive views about base, the Baseball Hall of Fame so far and the Hockey Hall of Fame. We haven't done them all, but you know what? The other ones are coming. Among the big four sports, how does football compare in your opinion? Uh, I think it – I personally, I find it I, – I would slot it probably in at number three of the big four. But I don't think it's far off. I don't think it's like a big, huge gap. Yeah, I'm one. with you. On, I'm with you on that. It's It's very good. And um, it's just a matter of, you know, I think you and I are both, you know, baseball and hockey guys before football guys. So kind of makes sense that we favor those two sports. Uh, one of the things it does do is it it has that. It has that baseball feel to it in that it's in Canton, where most people would be like, mm. oh, what's in Canton? Why would you go to Canton? 
Why is the Hall of Fame in Canton? You're going to tell us. I am going to tell you why the Hall of Fame's in Canton, because I made sure to look this up. September 17th, 1920. Professional football was in big trouble. Rising salaries, people jumping all over, no rules, dogs and cats living together. Craziness. So. Oh, my God. You just quoted. (laughs) <laughs> there you go gotta love bill murray uh so teams got together to create really the first real structured league uh so 10 teams gathered together in canton ohio uh one of the main teams at that time was the canton bulldogs and they created the american professional football association in 1922 they didn't like the four letters, so they went with the three letters, and the three letters were NFL. So in 1922, the the forerunner became the National Football League. And that is why the Pro Football Hall of Fame is in Canton, Ohio. Makes perfect sense to me. Class dismissed. See you later. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if you're if you're going to uh the Pro Football, and it is the Pro Football Hall of Fame. It's not like other ones like uh that are trying to encompass everybody and everything international or, or what have you. This is focused on pro football. So you're Tim Tebow. You had a great legendary uh, college career, went to the pros, didn't do quite so well. You're not in Canton. Good, or, good bad, or indifferent? Well, it's it doesn't have that that argument to it. So – there's always the argument in the hockey hall of fame that there's not enough yep. women or there's not enough, yep. you know, people from other countries or we, you know, uh, the Tretiak is in the hockey hall of fame. You know, why is Vyacheslav Tretiak in the hockey hall of fame? He never played in the NHL. So, right. So by, by reducing the scope, they could focus more and, yes. and I think do a better job. Yep. Uh, they don't have to do college because there is a there's an NCAA Hall of Champions. There's a College Football Hall of Fame. Yep. There is that piece, and very much football as a sport has that division where you can be one of the greatest college football players of all time and not be a great pro football player, or even way back in the day, you could be one of the greatest college football players and decide that you're not going to make enough money playing pro football and then go do something play else. Baseball. Yes. Like, yeah. uh, like something uh, like Harry Aganis. Yeah. Uh, Vern Gagne, who, who, you know, our friend Dan would know very well. He was, he's the founder of the American wrestling association, uh, went to, uh, Minnesota was drafted by the green Bay Packers, uh, was traded the Chicago bears realized he could make way more money in professional wrestling than he ever could in professional football. So he never played football. He could have been one of the best ever who knows, but (laughs) in that era, you know, there, there is that separation then. And, and the college, I, I, on my bucket list is to go to the college football hall of fame. I've never been, I've heard great things about it. I have been to the hall of champions. Uh, It's good, but it, the ability there is something to be said for the ability to just shrink that scope absolutely and uh the displays reflect this uh what are some of the displays we'll we'll get into the uh the hall of the enshrined a little later i'm sure it is very unique um some of the some of the uh, displays and uh i i kind of remember a lot of the and this is the kind of stuff i love the evolution of the equipment because compared to all the other sports Football is identified with their equipment, the helmets, the yeah, padding. Very true. So to to see the evolution, to see what people wore back in the 30s and the 40s and the 50s, and, and what they what they wear now, it, it's it's just so much fun to me. That was the highlight of the trip. I and it sure beat the heck out of that really awkward uh, virtual reality Joe Namath. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's even still there. It is still there. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little that was a little strange that part was yeah it was a little bit too uh a little too cheesy like they were you know beating their own drum there or, or whatever mm-hmm. i'm not sure uh one thing that's unique about canton as opposed to the other ones 
it's very much about telling a story. You start at the start and you traverse kind of following a certain yeah. path. So you start right off. Uh, the first spot you go to is called the NFL's first century. And it tells that that story of how the NFL came to be. And, uh, you know, 1932 indoor game and, and you know, 1920 and the, the Canton Bulldogs and, and all that kind of stuff. And then you move on throughout and you get that evolution. Whereas I would say in baseball, it's a little bit more haphazard. It's a little bit more, okay, well, yeah. in this section, we're going to talk about well, you know, uh, blacks in baseball and, yeah. and Jackie Robinson breaking the color barrier. In this section, we're going to talk about collectibles and the, the Hall of Fame in, in Canton is a is more I think it's more fluid. It's it's yeah. it's more like a it's more like a river. And and in a in a sport which depends very much on its plays and scripted, you know, the action's kind of scripted within the mayhem. Doesn't that make sense that you're going? This is your path. We're gonna we're gonna take you on your path. You can't you can't just kind of haphazardly as you said wander around and see well i'm gonna go look over here and then i'm gonna look over here like in, in the hockey hall of fame you walked into this big circular room and you can go that way you can go that way it doesn't matter you figure it out for yourself in football they, yeah. they kind of take you where you need to go that that is a that is an absolutely great way of of uh of putting it and actually funny funny you should mention you, you mentioned tim tebow right off the top in one of the sections where they were talking about uniforms broncos jersey Tim Tebow. <laughs> I'll never forget that pass he threw in overtime against the Pittsburgh Steelers, man. <laughs> well, I thought uh, on that day he had arrived as a pro football legend, but no. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the the interactive pieces is uh, kind of like I would say it's like basketball in that there's a lot of uh, comparing, right? So there's a display of of like footballs with. Uh, quarterback hands molds on them, and oh, so right. how the quarterbacks that. hold that. Uh, they have they have molds of 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 different players' hands, and how huge that their hands are, and how big the arms are, and how big the feet are, and how tall they are, and how wide they are, and all of those kinds of things. Um, so it, the interactive piece is a little bit a little bit different. Uh, <clears throat> I liked one of the things I liked maybe being. Um, a Dolphins fan who who has heard of 72, but was two years before he was being born. Uh, one of the neat displays, of course, and I know you love these displays where they show all the, the championship rings. Yes. Well, at the end, they have the design your own championship ring. So you can pick any year, you can pick any design, you can pick your team, whatever, you could design your own championship ring. So I, of course, designed a world champions, uh, Miami Dolphins for this year's Super Bowl. <laughs> I don't know if it's actually going to be a. Th it probably won't be a thing, but you know it was fun to do and and uh, a different sort of like a little bit more modern, um, interactive piece because of course you, you're using like this the giant iPads and touch screens and all that stuff. So uh, let's let's get down to the nitty gritty and talk about the place, the most popular room in any Hall of Fame, the Hall of the Enshrined. Now we've talked about baseball, where they have the the nice the plaques, they and hockey is the same thing. It has, it has the uh, the translucent plaques, which are very nice too. Football goes a different route. Football has a giant room of severed heads, <laughs> and yes, it's very. And what struck me about it, and I was I was not ready for what I saw because you know you, we all talk, and in the sports fan fandom world, we're all connected and we talk about things and people talk about how they don't like that room i'll get into my opinion later but i wasn't prepared for the darkness and like how it was i expected to be hearing gregorian monks chanting softly in the background when i stepped into this room that's the kind of atmosphere that it gives but it was very uh what's what's the word i want to use it was uh ominous it was very, ominous yeah ominous is a very good word yes ominous very serious, very mm -hmm. like almost th the antithesis of the of baseball, which has this this bright, yes, uh, almost heavenly. You know, you could, you know, you want you're hearing the monks, and I'm I'm hearing the angels singing in baseball, right? It's just got yeah. bright and and 
totally opposite in football. Very, very dark. Yeah. Um, the, the pictures, like your your camera just cannot get it. It 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 just tries to fix it. <laughs> so <laughs> the pictures of of the enshrine are not going to look as they would. It, you're just gonna have to. You're gonna have to go. <laughs> it's just not the same. Uh, but yeah, the bronze bust is like a real. It's really a thing. It's um. It is a little. It is a little freaky. Uh, I do find it. I find it probably the most challenging. Like if you're looking for someone, it's probably the most challenging. Uh, to well, because they, the guy doesn't, the bust all, doesn't always look like the guy that you're picturing in your head. Very and true. That was, that was part of the fun for me though. Like, who is that? Oh, that's Dan Marino. <laughs> <laughs> and of course it's a, it's a helmet league. So maybe not, you know, in the, if, you may not know what Anthony Munoz looks like, but exactly. now, <laughs> uh, I don't. Is Troy Polamalu in the in the Hall of Fame? He's got to be. If he isn't, if he isn't, and he gets there, they're going to have to charge like twice as much for his bronze statue because I'll send it's you my have picture, twice Dave, as much bronze. All that because if he was there, I took a picture of his statue. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I think a lot of people don't like the the hall. The, the the hall of the bus i liked it i really liked it but it's just funny that some of the guys you took a little work to figure out who they were like oh that's joe montana yeah okay, yeah, yeah. And, and to to go with that the inscription we'll call it inscription is very very muted small clear uh it, it is not it's like it's, football it's not like baseball or hockey where you have a big write-up it's maybe a, a, a sentence like this guy played for this team for this many years. Yeah, did this, that's, did it. This. that's it. Now they do have the the interactive piece with the giant iPads where you can find whoever you could get the you could get the uh, highlights uh, uh, of their careers and and all of those kinds of things. Uh, it's you know, in that sense, it's it's similar to all the other ones. But doesn't it make sense the way they do it in football? Because the way football has made itself out to be war. And made itself out to be larger than life. Doesn't it just make sense that we're dealing with bronze busts and just right to the facts? Yeah, no, it feels it no feels flowery right. prose, just the facts. It feels right. Um, you know, it's funny. Even the even in the Canadian Football Hall of Fame, uh, bronze heads, same same deal. Maybe it's a football thing. I don't know. Yeah, it just feels uh, like football to me. It's it's. I have a hard time. Like I, I, I think it's fair to say that the hardest of the bunches to get into is baseball. And oh, as a player, you mean? As a player, yeah, or whatever. Somebody in the game. Yeah. Uh, football, I struggle with. You know whether it, it, it's easy or, or difficult. Depends uh, on your position, I would gather. Yeah, it's it's so diverse with the positions, right? Like, how do you compare? How do you compare an offensive lineman like a left tackle with a with a running back? Right. The, the the numbers are just not there, and it's also subjective. Well, this guy made twenty five Pro Bowls. Well, that's because he was voted for by the writers, I guess. Um, it, yeah, it, I, I I'm not sure if it's it's probably in the middle where I would say hockey seems to be kind of they let most everybody in and. Baseball is extremely exclusive. I I feel that football is somewhere in the middle there. I I, I would argue that it it's easier for a quarterback than it is for a, a oh lineman. A, absolutely uh, or or a kicker or a punter. Is there like one punter in there right now, Ray guy? One, yep, yep, for sure. So so yeah, it depends. And you know what other thing? All right, go ahead, Dave. I don't want to. I was going to say because to to keep along with the idea of being enshrined. The, the Pro Football Hall of Fame has actually a section for fans who are enshrined. Huh. So there's a, a Ford Ford section because Ford sponsors it. Um, but yeah, there are there are probably about 15 uh, fans that have been enshrined in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and they do it one every year, kind of thing. Uh, none none that I recognized. Yeah. Like I would have thought, you know, the guy who plays who's Darth Raider is in there or the guy who is like the big dog in Cleveland or Fireman Ed or, Fireman Ed like or yeah. whatever. But uh, 
Yeah, none of them that I saw or that I remembered anyway. So, and One thing that I was just going to compare and contrast since we're talking about all the different halls of fame. You like that grammar right there? Um, you know, baseball fits in because it's in Cooperstown. You got the little town vibe and you can wander around. Toronto is the Hockey Hall of Fame and it's right downtown and you can, there's a billion things to do in Toronto. Basketball Hall of Fame might be the outlier. We won't talk about that right now. It's in Springfield, Massachusetts, which is where the sport was invented, but not a ton to do around uh, Basketball Hall of Fame or in downtown Springfield. Sorry, Springfield. If you ever want to know a tip in Springfield, well, when we do the Basketball Hall of Fame, we'll talk about that. <laughs> Canton is kind of the same way. I mean, you go to the the Football Hall of Fame. There's not a lot of other things in Canton that are going to draw you there. I would unless... say that, that that is they're attempting to change that. Yeah. So I was there just, you know, a few months ago and the construction there was considerable on the um, complex or yeah. Like they're building like a, like a Patriot place. So okay. like a number of different bars and restaurants and, and a lot of them um, football, you know, football related, like uh, they're building a, at the time, anyway, they were building a Don Shula steakhouse right there. So what Canton is going to look like, in another year or two will be interesting. Uh, I don't think it can, I don't think it's going to be like that organic kind of uh, Cooperstown where you have all the little souvenir shops and that kind of stuff. Um, but we'll see. I mean, they're, they're, they're definitely, it's definitely more going on this past time than when I went maybe about seven or eight years ago. Okay, well, that's good, because oh, maybe I'll have to go back then. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> like you got to go back, because this, this year was my guy. Zach Thomas, my most favorite player of all time, enshrined 2023 into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. We'll just wait for the guys from the Patriots dynasty to start rolling in, because they haven't gotten there yet. That's well, true. A couple, there, there a couple of trickled in. There are a few. But not. I was looking for Patriots. I was working hard. I was looking for Patriots and John John Hanna, Mike Haynes. It was tough. Uh, Tippett, Richard Seymour. Uh, Andre Richard Tippett. Seymour. Oh yeah, Andre Tippett. Richard Seymour is the first guy I think yeah. from the. Uh, well, say how he doesn't really count. Um, yeah, Seymour's the first guy from the dynasty year. So we'll see what happens. Do you think Tom Brady's going to make it in? It's going to be a squeaker. <laughs> There's going to be much debate over that one. <laughs> so. Uh, that's our look at the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. It's worth a visit. We hope to see you. Maybe at maybe at the Hall of Fame. If maybe. not, maybe at a game somewhere. Maybe, so, uh, maybe a game in Canton. The Hall of Fame game. Remember that year that they canceled it because like the logo the, the logo at the 50 yard line was too slippery? The guys Ooh. Got, the guy, yeah, they're afraid the guy's gonna get hurt. Yeah, <laughs> check that out. So anyway, thanks for joining us. We hope to see you on the road again real soon. Cheers. Cheers.